Hi there, fifth grade math students. This is chapter 9.3, Dividing Decimals. Now that we've mastered multiplying, let's move on to dividing. So first we're going to learn to divide tenths and hundredths by a one-digit whole number, and then we're going to learn to round quotients. Let's get started. We'll begin our exploration of division by dividing tenths by a whole number without needing to regroup. A 0.8 meter long ribbon is cut into two equal pieces. How long is each piece? We can visualize our ribbon laying on a one meter long number line and marking off our gradations here. And we can see here that our 0.8 meter long ribbon if we cut it in half, would be, well, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps. So dividing it in half would make each one 0 0.4 meters long, or 4 tenths meters long. You're not always going to want to draw a number line, though. So let me show you how to do this using traditional division. So let's begin by writing our problem to goes into 0 0.8, or 0 0.8 divided by 2. It's important to line up your decimal point in the quotient with the decimal point in the dividend, and you're going to do that by bringing it straight up and just dropping it down here, okay? So let's begin by dividing the ones by 2. 0 ones divided by 2 is 0 ones. We multiply 0 times 2 here and subtract that away to give us our remainder so we can continue working. I need to give us a little bit more room here, don't I? All right, let's go on. In step two, we're going to divide the tenths by two. Two goes into eight four times, so we'll place a four here right above the tenths. Now we solve four times two is eight. Subtract that away, we get a zero. So we are finished. Our each piece of ribbon is 0 0.4 meters in length. Try these two practice problems on your own. Press pause while you work and we'll be back to divide hundredths in just a moment. Let's divide 69 hundredths by 3. We begin by setting this up in an L division or a long division problem. Just like this. First, we divide the ones by three. Three goes into zero, zero times. And now we bring down our six. Don't forget to bring your decimal point straight up at this point and put it between your ones and tenths. Next, let's divide the tenths by three. Three goes into six tenths two times. Two times three is six, so we'll put our six here. 6 minus 6 is 0. Bring down our 9. And now we'll divide the hundredths by 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 times 3 equals 9, leaving us with no remainder. So our answer is 0 0.23. 69 hundredths divided by 3 is 23 hundredths. Now try dividing these two hundredths by a whole number on your own. Press pause while you work. We have more to do when you come back. Now we're going to move on to some more complex division. We're going to divide decimals with one decimal place by a whole number when we need to regroup. Our first problem is 0 0.8 divided by 5. So we'll begin by writing this in a traditional long division form. And in step one, we will divide the ones by five. Zero divided by five is zero, leaving us with eight. Okay? Now, how many times does five go into eight? It goes in once, right? Oops, I forgot to bring up my decimal point. Let's do that too. One times five is five, leaving us with three. Now, we could stop here and have a remainder of three-tenths, but there's actually a trick here that's pretty cool. 
that can get us to an answer with no remainder. We're simply going to place a zero here because the zero is there anyway, right? We just haven't been writing it down. It's invisible. Now we can drop that zero all the way down and our three becomes 30. Hmm. So how many times will five go into 30? Six, correct? Six times five is 30. And now we have no remainder. This is called regrouping in division, adding that zero so that we can keep working our way towards a number that our divisor will go into equally. Therefore, our answer to 8 tenths divided by 5 is 16 hundredths. Let me show you a couple more examples that work like this. The next example will work is 7 tenths divided by 4. We'll begin by dividing the ones place by 4, which is 0. 0 times 4 gives us 0. Drop down our 7. Bring up our decimal point. Now, how many times will 4 go into 7, which is in our tenths column? It'll go in once, right? 1 times 4 is 4. Subtract that away. We get 3. Let's add our 0 to see if we can get rid of that remainder. Drop it down, and we get 30. How many times does 4 go into 30? It goes in 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract that away to get a remainder of 2. Let's try again to see if we can get rid of that remainder. And let's find out how many times 4 goes into 20. Goes in 5 times, right? We've run out of room here, but I think you'll recall that 5 times 4 is 20, which leaves us with no remainder. So 7 tenths divided by 4 equals 175 thousandths. Let's try one more example before you do some of these on your own. How many times will 4 go into 2 tenths? Well, dividing the ones column, 4 goes into 0, 0 times. Let's bring up our decimal place. 4 doesn't go into 2, so we have to add a 0 here, right? Because 4 can't go into 2. So 4 times 0 is once again 0, leaving us with 2. Let's see if we can get rid of that remainder. Add a 0 and drop it down. How many times does 4 go into 20? That's right, 5. 5 times 4 is 20, leaving us with a remainder of 0. So 2 tenths divided by 4 equals 5 hundredths. Try these three problems on your own. Each will require regrouping, so don't forget to add that 0 to try to get rid of the remainder. Press pause while you work. We have more to do when you're done with these. Now let's divide decimals with two decimal places by a whole number when we need to use regrouping. A vegetable pizza costs $7.75. The cost is shared equally by five students. How much will each student pay? I've drawn our problem for us, $7.75 divided by five. And let's begin by dividing the ones place by five. 5 will go into 7 one time. 1 times 5 is 5, leaving us with 2. Let's bring up our decimal place and drop down our 7. Now let's divide the tenths by 5. 5 goes into 27 five times. Now let's find the remainder. 5 times 5 is 25 which will leave us with a remainder of two. Let's bring down the five so we can continue working. Now let's divide this hundredths place by five. Five goes into 25 five times. Five times five is 25, giving us a remainder of zero. So $7.75 divided by five gives us an answer of $1.55. Let's work another example like this. What is 35 hundredths divided by seven? We'll begin by dividing the ones place by seven, which will give us an answer of zero. Zero times seven is zero. And we'll bring down our three. How many times does seven go into three? 
zero times, right? Oops, better remember to bring up that decimal point. So zero times seven is once again zero. We'll bring down our remaining three tenths and bring down our five hundredths. How many times does seven go into 35? Five times, right? In fact, five times seven is 35, which leaves us with no remainder. So 35 hundredths divided by seven equals five hundredths. Here's the final example before you try some problems on your own. How many times does six go into 42 hundredths? Well, six will go into zero, zero times. And let's bring down our four tenths, bring up our decimal point. Six goes into four, zero times, right? So once again, we have a zero with a remainder of four tenths, bring down our hundredths to join it. How many times will six go into 42? That's right, seven. Six times seven is 42, leaving us with a remainder of zero. So 42 hundredths divided by six equals seven hundredths. Give these six problems a try. Each one requires you to divide the hundredths by a whole number, and each also requires regrouping. Don't be afraid to add those zeros to the end to try to get rid of those remainders. When you're finished with this, there's one last concept in chapter 9.3 to wrap up our work. Press pause while you work, and I'll see you in a moment. Our last idea for chapter 9.3 is to find quotients to the nearest tenth and to the nearest hundredth. Let's begin by finding 5 divided by 8 and rounding our response to the nearest tenth. So here we go, we'll set this up. How many times will eight go into five? It'll go in zero times, right? So we have five remaining. We're gonna add a decimal point right here after our whole number five so that we can add those invisible zeros that we know are there to help us try to get rid of our remainder. How many times does eight go into 50? It goes in six times because eight times six is 48. Let's subtract that away to get our remainder of two. Let's add a zero so we can keep trying to get rid of those remainders. How many times will eight go into 20? Twice, right? Eight times two is 16. Sorry, we're running out of room here. 20 minus 16 gives us a remainder of four. Let's add one more zero here. Let's see if we can get rid of that remainder. 8 goes into 45 times, 8 times 5 is 40. All right. So we've gotten to an answer with no remainder, but our directions say to round our answer to the nearest tenth. In fact, we could have stopped here, right? We didn't even have to do this step because we only needed 0.62 to be able to round. However, we're dealing with 0.625, so let's just go on from here. So if we want to round our number to the nearest tenth, we can actually ignore this digit in the thousandths place because the digit in the hundredths place is what's going to boss our digit in the tenths place around. Since that digit is a two, our six will not change. And our quotient rounded to the nearest tenth is six tenths. Now let's find a quotient and round it to the nearest hundredth. What is 13 divided by eight? Let's begin by dividing 13 ones by eight. They'll go in one time. Eight times one gives us eight, and we have a remainder of five. Let's add our decimal point so we can add that invisible zero that we know is there. We're just not looking at it yet. And drop it down. Let's try to get rid of that remainder. How many times does eight go into five? Or 50, I mean. It goes in six times. Eight times six is 48 giving us a remainder of two tenths. Let's add a zero, drop it down, and divide our 20 hundredths by eight. That gives us two. Eight times two is 16. Gives us a remainder of four. And let's see, we went around to the nearest hundredths, so we need one more digit. We've got to work out to the thousandths place in order to be able to round. So let's add one more zero, drop it down, and how many times does eight go into 40? 
it goes in five times. Eight times five is 40, so we have no remainder. Now let's round. We want to round our quotient to the nearest hundredth. So let's look at the digit in the thousandth place so we can boss this digit around, tell it what to do. Because that digit is five, it's going to force our digit to go up one value. So our quotient is 1.63, or one and 63 hundredths. And here we are folks, your last six practice problems for chapter 9.3. For problems 20, 21, and 22, please round your quotient to the nearest tenth. For 23, 24, and 25, please round your quotient to the nearest hundredths. When I see you in class tomorrow, we'll do more practice work on dividing decimals. See you then!